Hey, it's Aaron Walker, and you're listening to the 360 Entrepreneur with Jan Yengla. This is episode 69, and today we talk about how to live a life of success and significance. Here we go. Welcome to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the show for entrepreneurs and small business owners who dream big and want to do bigger. Join some of the world's top entrepreneurs, internet marketers, and best-selling authors as they share their inspiring stories, their struggles, and give actionable tips that will help you build, grow, and promote your online business. Here's your host, Yanni Lunga. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to this new episode of the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast, the day before International Podcast Day. Yep, tomorrow, September 30th, is International Podcast Day, and I'm going to tell you more about it after today's interview. In this episode, we talk about how to live a life of success and significance, and we are joined by Aaron Walker of viewfromthetop.com, and he has a great story to share, some valuable tips for all of us. And before we dive into it, let's take a quick break to celebrate International Podcast Day that, again, is tomorrow, September 30th. International Podcast Day is September 30th, and you can help spread the word. International Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved? It's pretty simple. First, head over to internationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. Second, use hashtag podcast day to join in the conversation. Remember September 30th. Now, let's start the conversation. All right, cool. You find the show notes with the links to everything Aaron and I talk about in this interview at 360entrepreneur.net slash episode 69. Let's hear it. Here is How to Live a Life of Success and Significance with Aaron Walker. Hey, everybody. I hope you are ready for this one. And today we are joined by someone who does so many interviews. We were talking about that before. He told me that he has done 120 and more podcast interviews and he's so knowledgeable. And he's the CEO of View From The Top. He's a business and life coach who has inspired many through his leadership, mentorship, and consistent pursuit of excellence. He's one of the very few people who have been invited on Jolly Dumas Entrepreneur on Fire podcast twice and his first interview is one of the show's top 10 episodes and if you think that there are more than thousand episodes on entrepreneur on fire is is not difficult to to guess that he's gonna be rocking this podcast and he's here to tell us how we can live a life of success and significance i'm so excited to welcome on the show aaron walker hey aaron how's it going Hey, Jan. How's it going, man? You doing okay today? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic since you're here with us. What about you? I'm doing great, man. It's a beautiful day in Nashville, Tennessee. So thank you for having me on your show. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thank you for accepting my invitation. And as I said, you have been very busy. You have been interviewed so many times. We were talking before the the conversation you've been on Entrepreneur on Fire. By the time this interview goes online, you're probably going to be featured on, on a Smart Passive Income. You've been on, on The Art of Charm. And you're the CEO of View from the Top, and you help many men through your company. So in case there is someone who's joining us that doesn't know much about you and View from the Top, can you tell us more about who you are and what can people expect from View from the Top? Well, thanks, John. I appreciate that. I'll give you a little bit of backstory to tell you who I am in the pre-interview chat. You know, we were talking a little bit about what I do professionally and how my life has uh, impacted some other guys as a result of my experience. You know, I'm 55 years old now, soon to be, not quite, almost. (laughs) And I've been an entrepreneur since I was 18 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, I started at a local pawn shop when I was 13. I don't know in Finland if they've got pawn shops or not, but it's just a place to borrow some money to help tide right. people over for a period of time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I started there. I was 13, fell in love with the business at 18, met a couple of guys that had a lot of money. They owned the 21st largest insurance agency in the country at the mm-hmm. time, and they were buying diamonds and gold from me in the pawn shop, kind of hedge against inflation. And I approached them one day. And he said, had you guys ever considered going into this business? And their first question was, is how old are you? And I said, I'm 18 <laughs> years old. And they said, we've never been approached by an 18-year-old to go into business. Right. They were about 
15, 20 years my senior at the time. And I said, well, I don't have any money, but I've got experience and I'd love to go in business with you. So, Jan, we formed a partnership and uh, went to the bank, borrowed $150,000. That was a lot of money in 1978. <laughs> it's a lot of money today, right. but it was especially a lot for an 18-year-old. Went into the pawn shop business for ourselves. We paid a 10-year loan off in 36 months. The wow. Lord just really blessed our business and Robin and I got married two weeks out of high school. I can't believe that either. But <laughs> as I look back now, I think about my daughters getting married at that age. You know, it's a little bit frightening, but we went into business and we uh, paid it off in 36 months. And then we bought our second store and we repeated that four different times. And when mm -hmm. I was 27 years old, Cash America, a Fortune 500 company in Fort Worth, Texas, came to Nashville. We negotiated a deal. And I retired. I was finished at 27 years old, nine years <laughs> after I went into business. And I thought this is going to be phenomenal. I've got my whole life ahead of me now. I can do what I want. I can play golf. I can fish. I can hunt. I can sit around and read all day and do whatever I want. And what I discovered was that I became extremely bored. Mm -hmm. I had no passion. I had no reason to get up. And I gained 50 pounds in about 18 months. Mm. And my wife woke me up from a nap middle of the day. And she said, Hey, when you've got to do something, you got to go back to work. You got to start another business. You got to do something. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't have any purpose. I don't have any reason to get up. And so I became very depressed. So I went back to the pawn shop I started with and bought 50% of it. We spent the next 10 years building a very successful business. And then Jan, my life changed forever on August 1st, 2001. I was headed to the office. It was 7:30 in the morning and a pedestrian was crossing the street to catch a bus, and he just didn't see me. He ran right out in front of me, and I hit the pedestrian, and he lived three days in the Vanderbilt Trauma Unit, and unfortunately, he didn't make it, and uh, it rocked my world because I thought my life could be taken just as quickly as he is, and right. I thought, I wonder what my legacy would be, you know, and I discovered that all of the success was about myself. It, it wasn't about other people. There was no significance in my life. It was all about success. It was about making more money, having a vacation home, the big house, the big car. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. You know, I don't want to take anyone's motivation away. I think all those things are good. But there was a real element of my life missing, and that was the significance part. Mm -hmm. So I go to the office and I tell my partner I'm done. I'm hanging it up. I'm through chasing money. I'm through building stores and I'm going to take a break. So I took the next five years off. I didn't do anything for five years. We built another house and we traveled and I tried to get my feet back under me and refocus. And so I came back for the second time. My wife said, you're getting fat and lazy again. It's time <laughs> to get back to work. And so uh, we went in the construction industry. The guy that had built my house, I so loved his work. I went to him, made him a, proposition to go into business. I would handle the administrative side, build the business. He could do the technical part of it. And we built it to the number one builder three consecutive years in Middle Tennessee. Nice. We built high-end residents and small commercial. And then I turned 50 and I said, I'm hanging it up this time for good. And I stopped working. A couple of my buddies told me, Dave Ramsey is a good friend of mine and has been for two decades now. And Dan Miller, 48 days to the work you love. They said, Avery, with 30 plus years of business experience, all the trials you've been through in your life, you and Robin have had a very successful marriage, even with its own trials. Mm -hmm. But you've you know, been able to manage through those difficulties as well. You need to coach and you need to help other people be successful in business and you need to help people be successful in their marriage. So I wasn't going to do this, but four years ago, I decided to give it a shot, and it's <laughs> really blown up, Jan. It's, I have national and international clients now. I have mastermind groups that I facilitate. I have what's called a community where me and all of the world come together, and they share resources and accountability. And I'm probably having more fun now than I've ever had in my entire career. Nice. So that's what View from the Top is all about. That's 
37 years journey there in about five minutes. <laughs> no, that's great. That you know the fir- the first thing I want to to tell you and that I'm I'm sorry about that 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 car accident, but but I'm happy that you you bounced back and you you build you know businesses and now you uh, four years ago you started view from the top. So guys, you can go to viewfromthetop.com and you can learn more about that, more about how you can join if it sounds interesting. And you told us about the, you know, what it meant for you to, to you, sure, you, you made, you made tons of money, but you were waking up without a purpose. So Aaron, if there is someone who is listening to you and I that maybe feels a bit lost, feels like, well, they're not sure what their, what their purpose is. Do you have any, any tips for them? Sure. Each day I use three different documents to help people discover their purpose. One of them is called a personal assessment. And it's where you go through and you discover what your identity is, your ideals, your values, your needs, your faith, your relationships, your career. Mm -hmm. You really discover we've got to discover who we are first as an individual. The second document I use, and I wrote all three of these documents, the second second one I use is called, what do I want? John, most people don't know what they want. They just know they want more and bigger and better and faster and shinier, but they don't really take the time to sit down on the front porch with their mate or alone and discover what do I want my life to look like? How can I design my life to live it proactively and not reactively? So Robin and I started doing this years ago. I don't really know why we had uh, the foresight to do this, but we did. And we said, we don't want to compare our life to the Joneses. We don't want to live like other people. What do we want to do in three years, five years, 10 years? What do we want our life to look like? Mm -hmm. How can we delay gratification to have the greater good later? And so we just elected to do some things intentionally. We set certain metrics and benchmarks. When we got to this point, we would do these things. We did discover that we couldn't do everything. Right. See, Greg, Greg McCowan wrote a great book called Essentialism, and he teaches in the book how to get the non-essentials out of your life and focus on the vital few. You know, we think we can do 10 or 15 things well, but we don't have the energy to mm-hmm. do that. If we'll put blinders on and do two or three things well and become an inch wide and a mile deep rather than an inch deep and a mile wide, we can become very niche down and we can really focus and become an expert at that. Well, if we do our lives that same way and realize we can't have everything we want and determine what are the main things that I want to accomplish. So Robin and I just became laser focused on the things that we wanted to do and how we wanted to raise our children. Mm -hmm. The third thing is, is steps to a productive day. Most people say, I know who I am. Now I know what I want, but I don't have a clue what to do. So I wrote a course called Steps to a Productive Day, and it walks you through the very beginning. I'm a very methodical, regimented person. I'm pretty boring, quite honestly. (laughs) It's because I'll drip regularly. I do the mundane task to be successful. Most people get lost in the high weeds, and they don't want to do the mundane task that Mm -hmm. it takes to be successful. But I know that if you will drip regularly, you'll do something methodically every day, regimented, that eventually the success uh, will come as a result of the hard work. And so those are the things that I would suggest you do. Discover who you are, identify what you want, and then do it methodically each and every day. Yeah, no, you're you're so right, Aaron. And I remember when we talked with uh, with John Milligan, we talked about uh, productivity and how to get the most out of our days. He also talked about the importance of consistency so like in many aspects of our both our personal and professional life if we take action consistently good things are gonna happen and you mentioned your course you mentioned the book essentialism guys like in every episode you find the links to those resources to view from the top and everything else Aaron and I are talking about in the show notes. So thank you for sharing those tips, Aaron. And I want to ask you another another question. And this actually I made a note because I read a post on, on View from the Top that I thought that you know could be a great great thing to discuss here because you talked about how a, a life and business coach can help. So if there is someone who's listening to you and I, maybe you know they've been thinking about 
whether they should get life and business coach and they're wondering okay how can the coach help me what do you have for them Aaron you know I don't want the interview to turn into a sales pitch for a coach and I know that's <laughs> not your intention but some of the things that we can do um I have coaches now I hired Dr. Kruger in Texas as my personal coach mm -hmm. I've hired uh, Michael is my LinkedIn coach. I'm actually looking for a Twitter coach now. What coaches can do is get you there much faster. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't have the intellect to figure it out on my own because I could, but why do I want to waste the time, the resources, the effort, and the energy to go through the trials and tribulations when I can go to somebody that's experienced it already mm -hmm. and advance myself? I've got clients that I've coached in business that have been in business for three years and because I've had eight successful businesses, they said you took me from three years to 10 years in six months. Right. Because we skipped all of the things. Well, what is that worth? There's a great value there. And what is your time worth? If you can go through, you know, I say don't step over for dollars picking up dimes. Hmm. And so you can invest just a little bit on the front end and it make you a larger amount of money over the scope of the project. So coaches for me just take you there faster. It's not that you don't have the ability to learn on your own. It's just why wouldn't you want to get there faster? And that's what coaches do. The second part of a coach is the accountability. 50% mm -hmm. of coaching is the accountability. It's kind of like if you didn't have somebody at the gym waiting on you at 430 in the morning, you'd hit the snooze button and you go back to sleep. <laughs> but you're not going to take the ridicule from Billy because he's going to be blowing you up because you didn't come to the gym this morning and work out. Right. Well, that's what coaches do. They help get you focused. And a lot of the times, coaches can see things that are already there. Most of the answers are there. Coaches just help you uncover that. Mm -hmm. And you get so close to it, you don't have a different perspective. And the only way we see it is through our lens. That's why I want to have trusted advisors around me at all time that are non-biased. They don't have anything to gain. They don't have anything to lose. That way, you're going to get the truth. And you know, in the council of of the multitudes, there's great wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I'd rather listen to people that have experienced it before that can help get me there faster. Yeah, I think, uh, Aaron, I think it was maybe uh, Robert Dickey here in, in the podcast that said the exact same thing about getting wisdom for a multitude of people who are objective. And, you know, you just made the example of, of yourself, actually. So you have, a, you have a LinkedIn coach, you are looking for a Twitter coach. So as you said, sure, you could learn how to master LinkedIn, how to master Twitter, whatever you, you want to, to learn on your own. But that would require more time, more energy. So if you if you have a coach, you can grow faster. And also another great way of growing faster and really having, uh, you know, people holding you accountable are masterminds. And I know you you have masterminds as well that you're both kind of a member and that you facilitate. So why, Aaron, do you think masterminds are, are so powerful? You know, in 1995, uh, Dave Ramsey, he was just starting his radio program on financial peace mm -hmm. and uh, he offered me advertising for free if I would try him for one week. No one had ever heard of Dave Ramsey. As a result of that, we became very close friends and we have been now for two decades. Years ago, many years ago, Dave invited me to join his personal mastermind group. I'd never had any exposure to a mastermind group, didn't know what a mastermind group was. I wished I did. I <laughs> wished I had discovered that when I was 20 years old. <laughs> and so I went to the group, very apprehensive, didn't have a clue what I was getting into, but because Dave was my friend and I trusted him, I said, I'll give this a shot. Well, Jan, it's been a game changer for me, completely, 100%. I attribute a vast amount of my success to my mastermind group because many, many times I've gone into that group with ideas only to learn and discover through many, uh, I subjected myself to that great scrutiny of many successful people, and they gave me great reasons to do it or not to do it. Mm -hmm. And they had nothing to gain either way. They had nothing to lose either way. And so I got an honest opinion. You know, we can ask a family member and they'll test the air. They'll see which way the wind's blowing to see what kind of answer you want or right. ask spouse, you know, and they want best for us and they're going to kind of agree with you. But when you've got experienced people that they have no dog in the hunt, they'll give you an honest 
answer. And that honesty has helped me so much over the years to not do something or to pursue something that I thought maybe wouldn't work, but they gave me the encouragement. They were there to empower me, encourage me, support me, or stop me. So the mastermind groups for me has been a game changer for over two decades. Aaron, you're really providing us with so much food for thoughts, so many inspiring tips. And before I carry on with our conversation, let's take a quick break to check out today's sponsor. If you're looking for a web hosting service, my number one recommendation is Bluehost. For just $3.95 a month, you get a limited web hosting and a limited domain, which means that you can host as many websites as you want with just a single Bluehost account. You get 24-7 top-notch support and you can install all of your WordPress sites with just a couple of clicks. Go to 36entrepreneur.net slash Bluehost to sign up. And when you do, Bluehost gives you a $50 Facebook credit and $100 worth of Google AdWords. That's at 36entrepreneur.net slash Bluehost. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you, Aaron. And, and I'm personally part of uh, two masterminds group, as well as a bunch of other online communities. So guys, if you're listening to Aaron and I and you have been thinking about, you know, joining a mastermind, just go for it. You're going to learn so much. You're going to get so much value out of it. And also it's something that uh, if you see that isn't for you, great. Look for another uh, group of people. And at some point I can assure you that you're going to find the right people, people that are going to help you grow and that are going to help you take the necessary steps to get, uh, to get where you want to get in life. And uh, you told us about your entrepreneurial journey a little bit. And I have to ask you, Aaron, for some for some wisdom when it comes to partnership, because as you told us, you, you have you've built uh, different businesses in different uh, fields, in different niches. You've been with different partners. So if there is someone who is joining us, Aaron, and he or she is thinking, you know, they're considering a possible partnership with somebody. What do you think are the things they should think about and do before actually, you know, agreeing on the partnership? Well, first of all, partnerships can be wonderful. I mean, they can be a great relationship. They can be a sounding board. You can complement each other. So I don't want to give any negative perspective on a partnership. I've had many, many partnerships. For the majority of them, they've been good. Mm -hmm. I have had some that's not been quite as good. So <laughs> So some of the things that I suggest to people in partnerships is, first of all, is you've got to be willing to have a servant's mentality right. in a partnership. You know, relationships are about what we bring to the table, not what we get. Mm -hmm. And so I would just suggest that you go into it with the mindset of out serving your partner. I'll give you one little example. Years ago, when I went into the second business the guy that was in that partnership with me was a very good friend and we worked out all the financial details except my salary. And he, he called me big A, all my friends and family called me big A. He said, big A, the only thing we've not resolved is your salary. We've mm -hmm. resolved everything else. And I said, I hadn't even thought about my salary. And he said, well, we got to pay you something. So what do you want to make? So I thought about it overnight and I came back the next day and I said, I want to make X dollars. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. And I said, Herb, it's not a problem. I told you it wasn't a problem. I understand whatever you think I should make, that's what I'll, I'll make. He said, you're worth double that, and we're going to pay you double that. Well, the number I gave him was a pretty good number because I felt like I was worth that. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm telling you that story is, is that was his heart. That was his mindset. It wasn't like, he was trying to take advantage and cut me down in salary. Right. He was saying, you're worth more and you bring more to the table. Well, that set the tone for our relationship going forward. Then he would call me periodically and say, I don't have to do anything today. Uh, I'll work. You go ahead and take off. And then we would serve each other. And if you can look at it in that light, see if you can outserve your partner, it will pay huge dividends going forward. The second thing is, is I would have a clearly lined out operating agreement. Mm -hmm. I would have it crystal clear as to what your responsibilities and obligations are. Everywhere there's a conflict, it's the lack of communication. Right. It's, I know what I said. I'm not sure what you heard. And that is where we get ourselves in trouble. But when it's clearly defined, 
I bought a beach house with a couple of my buddies years ago. And I said, before we buy this beach house, money can separate friendships. And here's mm-hmm. what we're going to do. We're going to have an operating agreement and we're going to detail out exactly if we want out. This is what happens. If one of our children want to come and stay here, here's what they pay. If it's torn up, here's what happens. Mm -hmm. We had a clearly defined set of rules as to how we were going to do that partnership. We remain today best friends. That was five years ago. And as a result of the operating agreement, there was no confusion. So have it clearly defined. The other thing is two more points I would point out that I Mm -hmm. think are very important is key man insurance in a partnership because Mm -hmm. you do not want to be in partners with their spouse. And if they were to pass away, you need to have the available cash to buy the other person out. A buy-sell agreement, you need to have the rules clearly defined. If you want out, this is the rules. If I want to buy you out, this is what happens. Right. I just think that you've got to be very careful going into a partnership. I tell everyone that marriage is grand. Divorce is 50 grand and it's the same way in a partnership. Everybody goes into a partnership with grandioso ideas. They're going to be amazing. Nobody goes into a partnership with the idea of this is not going to work. Right. But if you have all the operating agreements, the understandings, the servant's heart, you'll have a successful partnership. Aaron, this has been a fantastic conversation, really. You told us more about your story and view from the top. You you shared with us what it meant for you to sure to have made uh, a lot of money, but waking up without a purpose. And you share some some wisdom on what people who are listening to you and I, and maybe they feel that they don't have a purpose, what they can they can do. They told us what uh, life and business coaches can do for us. And you you now shared some some tips on what to think about and do when considering a partnership. And early on, you mentioned uh, Twitter, that you're looking for a, for a Twitter coach. And, you know, speaking of Twitter, I know that you are on Twitter. And guys, if you've enjoyed this conversation with Aaron, you would like to connect connect with him. You want to give him a shout out. You have maybe more questions for him. You find him at VFT Coach. So VFT Coach, you find him there. And like I said earlier, guys, you find the links to the Twitter, to view from the top, everything else Aaron and I have covered in the show notes. And to wrap up this amazing, inspiring conversation, Aaron, I want to ask you for some final words of encouragement, some final tips on on what each and every one of us can do to live a life of success and significance. Well, first of all, decide what success is to you. For me personally, it's choosing my own schedule and having financial freedom. It's having an engaging family and meaningful relationships. I want to have a clear conscience in every transaction. And at the end of the day, I want to leave a legacy of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Those are the things for me that are successful. In being significant, I want to be able to meet the needs of others. I want to learn to fully engage. I want to listen to that person intently. I want to stop waiting my turn to talk. Right. And fully engage and meet their needs. I want to help others when they can't repay me. I want to be able to be at other person's uh, needs when it's not convenient. I want to provide above and beyond the minimal requirements. I want to invest in the long term possibilities of changing the family tree for people uh, for generations to come. So we can do both. We can have success financially and yet, yet we can look outwardly and be significant. One way I want to do that this morning, I've created a landing page called viewfromthetop.com forward slash 360. And in that, I want to give you the three documents that I told you earlier that I used to coach with. Hopefully it can be a catalyst to propel you to be successful and significant. So there's no charge. I've made them for free. Go to viewfromthetop.com forward slash three six zero and help yourself to those documents that's awesome aaron thank you so much so guys once again you heard it view from the top dot com slash three six zero make sure to go there sign up and get the free resources made available but by our friend aaron walker and aaron i want to thank you so much for being here with us for sharing your story and your wisdom here on the 360 entrepreneur podcast it meant a lot to me 
Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. You've been a great host. I appreciate you having me on. All right, everybody, we are back. Aaron, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your story with us, for providing us with food for thoughts, and thank you for making the resource available. So you heard it. If you want to learn more from Aaron and what he has to share and what he has to teach, go to the show notes page of this episode, again, 360entrepreneur.net slash episode 69, and there you find the links to everything, and I mean everything Aaron and I have talked about in this episode. Okay, I told you before the interview, tomorrow is International Podcast Day, and I'm honored. I was asked to be one of the speakers. So if you are free tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, make sure to join me. The link you can join the conversation is at 360entrepreneur.net slash podcast day. Make sure to go there. And there's going to be events pretty much throughout the whole day. So if you're in a different time zone, you get to listen to people from maybe Australia, New Zealand, or podcasters from Europe like me. There's people from the States as well, including our friends, John Lee Dumas and Kate Erickson. Very, very exciting. So tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be talking about how to build authority through a podcast. And I'm going to share some strategies that I used, especially with my first podcast that I used when I didn't have many downloads and my podcast wasn't doing so much in terms of downloads and numbers and listeners, but I managed to build authority and to position myself as a go-to guy, as an expert. So if you want to learn more about those strategies, and by the way, some of those even apply to you if you have a blog. So even if you don't have a podcast, those still apply. Once again, make sure to join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Simply go to 360entrepreneur.net slash podcast day to join all the events related to International Podcast Day. And make sure to spread the word. Use the hashtag podcast day. I hope to see you tomorrow, and in case you can't do it, I'll try to record it and make the replay available at the same link. This is it for today. Thank you again for tuning in, and I wish you an awesome International Podcast Day. Thank you for listening to the 360 Entrepreneur Podcast. For more tips and tools, head over to www.360entrepreneur.net.